We've got 10 minutes of footage, four guys to talk about. Let's spend two and a half minutes on each. What's going on? Let's talk about some defensemen that are apparently on the trade block during this 2020 NHL free agency period. We're taking a look at this article over here on The Score who goes over a few of these defensemen, and then we'll pull from another article to get at the last one. But... Starting things up over here on this article on the score by Josh Wegman, it is Shane Gostaspare. And I know, everybody who's taken a look at this video, you're like, darn, we're talking about Gostaspare again? Are you serious? Yeah, this guy's been in trade rumors for years now, and it's not even funny. The fact is, Shane Gostaspare at his best is a number one power play quarterback who can really just absolutely rack up the points put the moves on on the offensive zone, and do some very good things. However, for the Philadelphia Flyers, Shane Gostaspare has not shown all too much of that as of late. He's a guy who many people thought, okay, now that Matt Niskanen retired, there better be an opportunity for a Shane Gostaspare to come back here on the Philadelphia Flyers and actually prove himself as the player that we know he could be. The player that the Philadelphia Flyers would market Gostaspare as in a trade-like scenario. He's a guy who is indeed 27 years of age. He's making $4.5 million until 2023. And if he can get back to 65-point caliber in the NHL, then my goodness, that could be an incredible contract. But the Flyers then signed Eric Gustafson, meaning that they got themselves a nice offensive defenseman who can play on the left side and do a power play thing. So Shane Gostaspare's name is, in the eyes of some media people, back on the trade rumor side of things again. So whether or not the Philadelphia Flyers are able to use a Gostaspair to make a trade for a guy like, I don't know, Patrick Lyonet or something, who knows? But what you're getting here in Gostaspair is a boatload of potential. He's still not relatively old, so there still is some room for improvement, but injuries have indeed caught up to him, and he hasn't really been the most consistent. So, going into the long-term future, if you're taking a shot on Shane Gostaspair, what you're doing here is you're taking a shot in the dark. And if you're taking a look at it, you're saying, okay, if he doesn't pan out, if he stays at a 15, 20-point defenseman, then who knows if you're able to develop his two-way game as well, develop him out in your own zone too, because a $4.5 million cap hit is indeed something that you probably should try to work with at the very least. Next up on this list over here, it's still on the Scores article, we have ourselves Jake Gardner. Yes, I know, Leafs fans, Jake Gardner is back on the trade block, and this is a very interesting one indeed. Gardner is 30 years old, playing for the Hurricanes, and as like Shane Gostaspare, his contract goes on until 2023. His cap hit, however, is $4.05 million, meaning that he's a guy who isn't really as expensive. Gardner has been a consistent 30, 40, sometimes even 50-point guy with the Maple Leafs, but in this most recent season, a play saw him drop down to 24 points in 68 games played. It was reported earlier in the month that Gardner was actually on the trade block, and the Carolina Hurricanes were looking for options. The article over here says that, hey, you know, his transition over to Carolina wasn't as smooth, and the Carolina Hurricanes have cheaper defensemen who can fill in Gardner's role. You can cue all the jokes you want about Jake Gardner and Game 7s and how that's a completely different player. But at the end of the day, if you're getting a Jake Gardner who is rebounding, who has a chip on his shoulder from a poor year compared to the rest, and who wants to get back to 40-50 point pace, if you're getting yourself a guy who can do that for $4.05 million a season and he gets there, this, like Gostaspare, can be a steal of a contract. Now, depending on what exactly it is you give up, there could be some questions here. But if the Carolina Hurricanes are desperate and they want to get this guy out, they want to use their other defensemen in the system to replace that role, then... You can see if you can have the negotiating power there. Say you guys really need to get this done. The best we'll do is, I don't know, a second round pick or something. So there certainly are some options here. And the fact that it is Jake Gardner, a guy who has been one of the more polarizing NHL players over the past few seasons because he played in Toronto. And we all know how crazy Toronto is when it comes to its players and its performance on the ice, let's just say. But if the Carolina Hurricanes are indeed exploring a Gardner trade option, then we will see how things develop on that front. 
Finally, from this article on the score, it is Rasmus Ristolainen, a guy whom it's mentioned in the article it feels like he's been on the trade block for an eternity, but the Sabres haven't found a taker for him. He's a guy whom we've actually made a video about all the way back in 2019. I made this video on the Skytrain, and I was talking about the idea of the Vancouver Canucks getting Rasmus Ristolainen, a guy who at the moment is 26 years old, so he's a year younger than Shane Gostaspare and four years younger than Gardner. He's making five $5.4 million until 2022, and at his best, is a very capable top four defender. The problem is, in Buffalo, they play him as a little bit more than that, and even though he has gotten 41, 45, 41, 43, and 33 points over the past few seasons... He's still a guy whom Buffalo Sabres fans are like, yeah, you know, I'd rather not see this guy on the team because they do have a log jam on the right side of their blue line and they do have themselves a whole bunch of other defensemen who are also very capable of getting minutes. He's been on the trade block for a very long time, so we'll see what exactly happens with Ristolainen. But in my opinion, if you're taking a look at this guy, he's a guy whom if you're a good team, if you are a team that can contend for a cup, maybe even the third round or something, then Ristolainen's a top four guy. You can give this guy about 17, 18 minutes a night, and he'll be fine. When you start overplaying him, though, that's when the problems start to arise, and that's kind of what happened with Ristolainen in the Buffalo Sabres organization. Sure, he was great. 40 points is nothing to scoff at, but there's a reason why a guy can get upwards of 40 points, and the fan base can still say, man, I would be fine if we moved on from this kind of player. Who knows, though, because again, with the additions of Eric Stahl, with the additions of that Taylor Hall, it's the Hall-Stahl trio plus the Cousins who's coming over from the WHL. If you guys are in a spot where you really want to capitalize on all the NHL-caliber talent you have, you have an opportunity to really use Erasmus Ristolainen in a sheltered role and actually use him to his strengths. Even though he is a big six foot four puck moving defenseman, he still is a guy who has never been perfect. So having sheltered minutes, giving him that opportunity to really develop with some competition on the blue line, that may be something that you could see as a positive, especially if you have all the other firepower that was added on the offseason. But of course, that's just speculation. The idea here is that Ristolainen may be available for a trade, so let's move on to the last defenseman here. It is not from the score article. We're taking a look at an article over here from the Winnipeg Free Press. Today we're talking about Sammy Niku. And yes, this guy is by far the youngest player on this list over here. The Winnipeg Free Press article goes over how Sammy Niku is denying the trade request, but it goes over how the Winnipeg Jets are indeed shopping the former top prospect defenseman. Sammy Niku is a guy who is 24 years old, and if the Jets are in a position where they want to trade him, what you're getting back in a trade for Winnipeg is probably going to be that number four top four defenseman that can play in the NHL now. Sammy Niku is a guy who is 24 years old, he's left-handed himself, and he's a guy who honestly some people could say is an NHL caliber D-man, but over the past few seasons has really shown his worth off at the AHL level. He only played 17 games this most previous season with the Winnipeg Peg Jets, split his time with the Manitoba Moose, was a point per game in the AHL, but that's pretty much it. The fact is, right now, Sammy Niku, a guy who is one of the top young defender point scorers in the AHL, is an RFA at the moment. He needs a contract, and if any team is out there willing to shell out the money for a guy like Sammy Niku, then you could be trading what was, I don't know, a third round pick or something for this kind of guy. We mentioned the top four defensemen earlier, but it is reported in the article that guys like Roslovic and guys like Patrick Laine are also on the trade block, meaning that if any of these guys go, you're probably seeing them all packaged together for a big deal. Who knows how that is going to work out? But as we have spoken about with some of these other guys, if a Sammy Niku, who's 24 years old, is able to come into the NHL and replicate the same success he had in the AHL, you have a legit point-per-game defenseman, and obviously that's very difficult to do. I don't want to make it seem like it'd be easy for a guy to replicate his success, but the ceiling that we saw in the AHL is there. The fact that he is only 24 gives him so much room to grow, and he is an RFA, so that's the whole question you have to ask yourself too. What would you be willing to pay this guy? What's your term? What's your overall AAV? 
but if the Winnipeg Jets are in a position where they want to use that money on a top four D-man instead, we may be able to see a Patrick Laine, Roslovic, and maybe a Niku trade sometime in the near future. It really just depends on who bites. So talk to me in the comments about these four guys, Gardner, Ristolainen, Gostaspair, and Sammy Niku, and whether or not you would like to see your favorite NHL team make a trade for them. Talk to me in the comments what you think if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for that, Trollus 99. And bye. <laughs>